Good morning again, my people. Earlier, I told you we were going to go to the social media talkback. I apologize. We're not going to do that in this show today. We're not having the social media talkback. So I just wanted to let you know. Now, my people, an article from The Gleaner um, recently, I think it was just the other day, the 20-year legal battle between Paymaster Jamaica Limited and Paul Lowe over breach of copyright ended. It was on Thursday last week with the Supreme Court. Now... The background of the story um, with the Supreme Court ordering the company to pay the computer programmer and software developer $282 million in damages. So Law's attorney, the programmer, Vincent Chen, said the interest would bring the total amount payable to his client to just over $600 million. Justice Lisa Palmer Hamilton, who assessed the damages, found that Lowe suffered financial losses because of an injunction that prevented him from selling his bill pay payment his bill, pay, bill payment software locally and internationally. Now, Paymaster, a bill payment company founded by Ambassador Audrey Marks, had brought a claim against Grace Kennedy Remittance Services Limited and Lowe after the computer programmer sold a bill payment software off to the uh, food and financial conglomerate uh, to launch its subsidiary, Bill Express. Paymaster, which contended that it had exclusive rights to the software, which Law had first sold to it, right, which Law had first sold to it, obtained an injunction in the Supreme Court barring the programmer from selling his software. So Law and the Grace Kennedy Remittance Services were successful in the Supreme Court in the claim against them as the court ruled that Law was the owner of the software, right? So $282 million in damages. So I want to now go into this conversation and invite our very special guest um, to the show to discuss IT patents and to prevent it happening to anybody else. So let's first start with our guest, Christopher Record, who is the CEO of T-Tech Limited. Good morning to you. Good morning, how are you doing? I'm great, I'm great. And we also have Chukwameka Cameron, attorney at law. Good morning to you. Good morning, how are you doing? I'm great. I, 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 I want to go straight into IT and patenting, patenting Christopher Record. What does it mean when you create something and sell it to a company? Who then owns the IT? Who owns the patent? How does it work? It all depends on what's in your contract. So massively important is what did you and your IT practitioner agree? So when I'm brought into an organization to help with work, first the negotiation discussions take place. We have to agree and have to put it all in writing and our agreements have to state exactly who owns what and who's doing what. So I can speak more from the law side, but from the IT side, it is massively important that we are crystal clear on what the expectations are and what I promise that I do and then what you are expecting from me. And this situation here, uh, there were some gray areas. Mind this 20 years ago, there were some gray areas in, the, it, you know, this is, the, this is the assumption situation. What was assumed, what wasn't assumed, but they, in terms of software development, the owner of the source code and that source code is key uh, to this case. Okay, thank you for sharing with that. What happened? Why did it take so long, um, Mr. Cameron? Why did it take so long for this case to be settled? 20 year legal battle? That's a long time in the courts, or is it not a long time? It, 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 it is a long time in the courts, but it went from our S Supreme Court to our Court of Appeal to our, to our Privy Council and back to our Supreme Court, and on several occasions, more than one issue was determined by more than one court. So there are several issues that were litigated over the years, and that is what really held it up. And at the end of the day, when we're speaking about big sums like this, sometimes it does inure to the benefit of one party to really exploit the amount of time it would take in the court. So it could have been strategic as well. Okay, and it could have been 600 million, but they only got 282 million. Um, why was that? Uh, the, so that was a function of an assessment of damages. And mm -hmm. what the, the judge in the Supreme Court had to do, they actually had to look at the, what see, they were entitled to get. Um, we don't have the actual calculate. The actual calculations weren't set out, so we are not perfectly clear on the actual 
calculation. Mm -hmm. But what caused the sums to balloon was the interest that ran from the date of the injunction that was granted in 200,000, sorry, in 2000. But it's really the interest that caused the figure to balloon because okay. interest would have been calculated from the date of the injunction to today's date. Okay, I'm going to ask you um, now, Mr. Record, when it comes to IT and we're looking at people being able to access data protection, and I know at T-Tech Limited you focus on that, I want you to give us a little insight as to whether or not we are safe when we put all of this information online and how do we protect our identity in the world of IT? Well, out there, um, luckily we have just had a, some people think it's lucky, some people think it's not so lucky. We have the Data Protection Act that has just uh, passed through both houses and it's now to be gazetted. But we do have some legal protection. Mind you, of all, it's not legal protection of the Constitution, but it's now uh, set out more strictly in, in, in the law. So there is the legal compliance and then there is the IT compliance. On the IT compliance, we have a list of recommendations, we have a list of practices that we help our clients with. So it's ensuring that your IT infrastructure has the requisite technologies in place to safely protect and back up your, your customer's data because this is what is at play right here. Um, these systems that were developed, you know, 20 years ago, um, you know, what specifically happened in that case in terms of what was more of a copyright situation, uh, what we're talking about, data privacy, but it's all, it's all technology based on who owns what. Right now, uh, you own your data and you have all within your rights to say if you give consent for me as a company or my customer uh let's say you your organization that you to use that data and then there's the and there's a legal compliance part and and chuck will speak to uh you know he, one of his his babies in terms of uh, a dpo dpo as a service data protection officer as a service mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I am getting the rap signal. They always rap me when I'm getting into my interviews. <laughs> no, Jamaica, it's a it's a jam packed it's a jam packed show. So I'm gonna I, I'm gonna ask my producer to give me a couple more minutes to look into this um, data protection. Talk to me about that, Mr. Cameron. So what the law what the law has required persons who use data to do is to ensure that they process the data in a certain way. They have said, you hold crown jewels in your business. You must recognize that you hold crown jewels. So you are required to do A, B, C to ensure that the crown jewels are protected. And you, you now need to use entities such as TTEC to, to implement some of those requirements that the law has required. More importantly, as Chris had indicated, it has not articulated the constitute the rights that data subjects hold. So you have a right to know what information a company has on me. You have the right to object to a company using information on me. You have a right to have, have them erase it. So the, this is a very far reaching law in that it has recognized that my personal data is of value. It has told that company that look, you hold that customer's crown jewels you have to secure it. Mm, interesting. I want to ask you now, if I have an idea, an IT idea, and I want to protect it from anybody, well, protect the, the, the idea, the, the product, I want to own it, I want the patent for it, what legal steps do I take? Well, that's a couple. Number one, no, number one, you don't own the idea. You can't protect the idea. Mm -hmm. Once it is documented, that's the first step of owning the copyright in it. Mm -hmm. Once you document it, you then need to establish that the date when you created it. Thereafter, when entering into commercial negotiations, make sure, as Chris has indicated at the beginning, you set out the terms, whether or not you are going to retain ownership of it or whether or not you're just going to allow someone to use the product. Okay. All right. And they can call you. Call any lawyer to help them, right? <laughs> any lawyer. All right. And Chris, you have a, a webinar coming up. Please tell us what it's about and how can we be a part of it? Yes. So TTEC has decided that during this time, we are helping customers, uh, just kind of informing them on broad uh, read technology. Uh, so Chuck was with us a couple of weeks ago as we did a, a data protection 
at a webinar. We're doing one again at the end of July. So we're having a webinar every Thursday. So it's almost like T Tech Thursdays. Yeah. As we're doing a every Thursday morning at 10 a.m. Just go to the T Tech website and you can register for the series of webinars. So uh, the one tomorrow, budgeting and forecasting. Next week, we're talking about making a business case from moving to the cloud. Uh, talking about um, cybersecurity. Then again, we're going to be doing the data protection again from the end of, end of July. So every Thursday morning, 10 a.m., we have a webinar going on on our system. Excellent. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us in this segment where we talk about the 20-year legal battle between Paymaster and Paul Lowe has now come to an end. We were jam-packing it with IT um, patents and lawsuits and technology and data protection. So, again, Christopher Record, CEO of T-Tech Limited. Good luck tomorrow during that webinar, T-Tech Thursday webinars. And thank you so much, Chukwameka. Cameron, attorney at law, for sharing that information with us. And on the other side of the break, we step into entrepreneur space and speak to somebody who got stranded on the island and decided to start her own business. Stay with us.